guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a minute. I will be talking about my IUD experience and I'll be applying some makeup. So if you want to hear a really good story time while I do my makeup, please stick around. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do before I start talking to y'all is I'm gonna use my face primer and this is Touch Glorious Face Primer from Unique. I'm gonna use about that much and just dab everywhere. And kinda just get my face ready, my skin ready for foundation and everything else that I am going to use. Now what I love about this face primer is that it is very velvety, okay? And it really does um, fill in your pores quite nicely. So if you have enlarged pores like me, I they got enlarged as I got older, then you, um, will want to use this primer. This is our Unique Touch Spray Foundation. Um, this is a full coverage foundation, which I absolutely love. So I'm going to be using this today because with this foundation, you really don't need um, concealer, which is really, really nice. So I'll just, and I'll just, gradually put it on my face. So I'll spray it onto my beauty blender and just gradually put it on my face. Okay, so I don't talk up so much about my birth control methods only because I feel like birth control methods are very private and very personal and I feel like Every person has their own um, method and they should do the research for themselves, which is why I don't, unless I'm completely, totally asked um, about it myself, I don't divulge information. But seeing as I am embarking on a new journey, on a new path, um, and I'm seeing a lot of common commonalities, sorry, um, that I didn't know existed. Well, not that I didn't know existed, it's just that because I've never experienced them myself, now me experiencing it, it's kind of crazy. And it's I, something that I think should be talked about more in social media and you know, in the public eye or public forums, as opposed to, um, as opposed to, you know, hiding it or being, feeling ashamed about it. Um, so which is why I decided to do this video and talk about, uh, my situation and my methods of birth control and what I decided to use when I decided to use it how it's worked for me and um, why I decided to no longer forgo it. Um, so you're going to see all of that in this video. I'm going to talk about all of that with you guys while I do my makeup. Kind of like a story time while I get glamify. Okay. So with foundation, before I, I start talking about that with foundation you want to make sure you have a good match and if it's a full coverage you want to make sure that you apply it generously and you don't rub it in too hard but that you're able to cover all the spots that you want to cover so here I'm just making sure that any darkness that I may have not tended to is perfectly covered and I'm going to go ahead and kind of work that down okay down to my neck 
You always want to make sure that your neck matches your face because if you really notice, your neck and your face are the lightest parts of your body as opposed to the rest of you. Um, and it's, it's always a different color. Your face tends to be a different color than the rest of your body. And me, I am a tan Puerto Rican woman and I can definitely see the, um, the darkness within my body and my face and my neck. So I just want to make sure that everything looks as even as possible. Okay. So I'll go ahead and like blend all of that in. Mind you, I am gently tapping, okay? I'm not fully beating my face yet because I don't feel the need to. Now the cool thing about this foundation is that it is full coverage. So like I had no concealer on and as you can see, it's doing a really good job. But for little scars or dark spots that still tend to come through because you're gonna find that little scars and dark spots will tend to come through. It doesn't matter how good of a coverage. I'm going to use my e.l.f. concealer. This is what that looks like. As you can tell, I use it a lot. So I'm just gonna put some of the colorful one the like skin tone one and just kind of like erase any darkness that wants to come out and just blend that in so I tend to get dark around the corner of my mouth um, because that area I get like rashes like dry itchiness and so it tends to just come out when I don't want it to come out then I'll get my beauty blender and just blend that in and already it's even I tend to do my makeup way backwards I know there's a lot of people that do things differently, but I'm not going to go all out with my brows today, only for the simple fact that um, I'm letting my brows grow out. So if you can see here, okay, they are, and if you see me looking to the side, it's because I'm looking at the screen. They are growing. Now the reason why I'm letting them grow is because my brows are very thin and you cannot see them. Like right now, this is me without makeup. This is me um, like without doing anything to my brows, okay? And I'm letting them grow because I want them to get shaped proper. I do have a cousin who studied this stuff and I spoke to her about my brows and she was like, hey, let them grow and I can help you out. So, um, the palette that I'm gonna use is called my Moodstruck Brow Obsession Palette. Then I kind of start filling it in little by little. And I will brush with the spoolie brush and kind of just blend that in little by little, as you can see here. Okay, so let's talk IUDs. Um, I had I had used birth control pills since um, I was a teenager, only because I've always had irregular periods. And if there's any teenagers watching me right now or any preteens discuss the birth control method with your moms um, or a doctor 
um, or a close relative that can give you good advice on that. Um, for me, I started on birth control pills because my cycles were always irregular and I always had heavy periods with heavy uh, blood clotting. And so my mom, you know, spoke to my doctor and they, they thought it would be best to give me the birth control um, pills to help regulate my cycle. For other people, it tends to help them lose weight. That wasn't the case for me. It didn't help me lose weight. It was quite the opposite. I was getting crazy cravings and I was always bloated and I always considered myself to be like a thick woman. Um, I used to be skinnier when I was younger, but of course, puberty got to your girl and <laughs> puberty won. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue my story as I finish my brows here. So right now I'm only doing the lightest brown shade of my palette right there. This is the Brow Obsession Palette from Unique. If you're just watching and tuning in, this is a retired product, but I still have it. I started with birth control pills and that helped regulate my, my periods for a good, good time. However, it, um, like I said, it made me hungry because essentially all these birth control methods, what they do is, is they psych your body into thinking that you're pregnant so that you stop bleeding. And that's kind of what the birth control pill is for. Um, I'm pretty sure they have, I'm, I know they have more methods besides a pill but that's how I started out. That's how that was my first encounter with any kind of birth control. It was due to my irregular periods. So as I'm on this pill, you know, a lot of things are getting regulated, but I'm also getting cravings and um, I have a sweet tooth just naturally. And so the cravings did not help at all because all I wanted was like chocolate and ice cream and till this day I'll get my period and I'll still want chocolate and ice cream while I am PMSing so <sighs> that is my downfall but you know I know how to control it so that was my first encounter with birth control I started with pills and then I like I wouldn't say I got lazy, I'll just say that I got forgetful. I was, I must have been like 17 or 18 when I started on birth control. Um, I didn't start early. I definitely did not start early because to begin with, I wasn't even sexually active. I was able to just be on birth control without worry and even if I missed a pill and we're back um so like I was saying before I was rudely interrupted my I wasn't sexually active when I was young I know you're probably thinking what that's a lie no really I wasn't sexually active all right so I'm gonna go ahead and just fill in little bits and pieces with dark brown just to darken this a little bit, especially the tail. And I'm going to blend it out. Whoops. See that? Gonna blend it out. I don't know about you, but one brow is always better than the other. It's just crazy how it's just that way. My brows are crazy, and so I'm working with what I have, people. Please, don't judge me. 
Also, I'm letting my brows grow so like the shape is not even pretty or perfect. So I'm trying to create shape where there is no shape. Or, excuse me, where there used to be shape because now it's like full of like little hairs. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do is eyeshadow. In this palette, I'm just going to use the pink one, which is that one, because that one brightens up your eyes. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab some and just put it on the inner and outer corner and just one line like that. Can you see that? And I'm going to blend this with the Beauty Blender. Make sure you get it all the way into your like tear duct there. Because that's going to help brighten your eyes. And this is the pink concealer for anyone wondering out there. Okay. So with this concealer as well, you can do your brow bone and just brighten up your brow bone as well. Okay. And this will serve, if you don't have eye primer this will serve kind of as an eye primer because it'll help you it'll brighten up your eyes and it'll help set your eyeshadow makeup so now i'm gonna grab my addiction palette four this is what it looks like mood struck also for unique product these are the colors in the palette i think i'm gonna go pretty neutral I always do kind of a neutral face. Okay, so I'm starting with Tender. And I'm putting it all over my lid because I want Tender to help accentuate and highlight any matte colors that I put on my lid. And Tender has a good, pretty shimmer. And I'm putting it all the way in and out. Okay, and notice I'm not rubbing or brushing. I'm mainly just patting. Patting, patting, patting. Okay, so going back to my story. Um, birth control. Um, so the pills were the first ones that I did. I got very forgetful and I stopped taking them, which made my period very irregular again. But the same birth control pill that I was taking, I couldn't find it again. Also, I got those pills when I was under my mom's insurance. But once you're 18, you basically left, you know, for yourself to get your own insurance. And any adult out there, watching me knows it is not as easy as it looks or as simple as anyone makes it out to be. Fast forward to years later when I am in my 20s, okay, years ago um, I decided I went to the doctor and she spoke to me about birth control, she spoke to me about my cycle, you know, just your normal checkup and I remember her asking me a simple question if the person that I was with at the time if I saw myself with him in the future down the road I was very naive and to me I always wanted to think positive and think yes I do see myself with this person but that doesn't always work that way. And she was like, do you see yourself having kids with him? Like, honestly, I was looking 
for a relationship, you know, not a booty call. I wasn't trying to be that girl, but you know, things happen. And so when I, I remember giggling and not giving her like a straight answer and she was like, okay, it's easier. She's like, it's your choice, but the way you're sounding right now, it doesn't seem like that could be something permanent and it's better to be safe than sorry. So I suggest getting like an IUD. I was very scared and skeptical of IUDs because I've heard a lot of people and horror stories and so I told her, well, walk me through it. What are the different IUDs out there or birth control options out there? And she spoke to me about the, you know, doing a pill. She spoke to me about doing IUDs, which are, which is short for intrauterine device, maneuvering, and I don't know what else. She was like, there's also a patch, but that has to be put like every certain t amount of time, da 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 da. So for me, knowing that I didn't want to have the hassle of switching or updating or going to the doctor 24 seven, I asked her how long do I keep the IUD in and what does it do? And she was kind enough to explain it all to me especially since all of this was very new. She told me, well, basically what an IUD does is it tricks your body into thinking that you're pregnant by releasing a whole bunch of hormones into you. And what it does is it stops you from bleeding. Your body thinks you're pregnant, so it stops you from bleeding. So essentially it's going to store up, you know, your blood within your um uh urine wall lining um because it's gonna think that your excuse me that was my alarm clock i have an alarm for everything you guys anyways um it tricks your body into thinking that you're going to have a baby uh you know basically a long story short so i was like okay and you know how does that work? Is it going to hurt? Da, 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 da. She's like, it's going to hurt when they put it in. Um, once it's in, you'll, she, you'll probably spot or bleed for up to six months, but some people don't, don't experience it that long. You can also um, not bleed at all. Like it can go in, you'll spot maybe a few days after we put it in, but you can essentially just not bleed but you won't bleed for five years and I was like okay um, and they were like you can put it on for five years or you can put it on for ten so I said okay let's do the marina let's do it for five years if with if from here to five years if I'm not with someone permanent then we'll put it on again for another five years. thankfully um, as soon as I put that in Shortly, I wouldn't wouldn't say, um, I would say like a few months later is when I uh, met my boyfriend. I dumped the guy I was with and I found my man. The man that I love, the man that I'm with. We've been together for five years. Going on six this coming March, uh, uh, which I'm really excited about. Um, I never thought I was going to find anyone to love me as much as he loves me. I thought I was not going to find someone to care for me and to just treat me like a queen the way that he does um, and spoil me as much as he does. Like I thought that was, I thought that was just a fairy tale. I honestly thought that didn't exist. And I was pleasantly surprised when he found me um, and we have been together ever since. Years, five years later, I find out that I found my Morena card because it said the date. They gave me the date of when it's supposed to come out. I saw the date and that's when I sat down with my boyfriend and I spoke to him. And I talked to him. Um, one of the first conversations we had 
on our first date, face to face, as well as on the phone, was, are you willing to have more children? Because he is already a father to a beautiful little girl, but um, I have I had met single dads before, and they didn't want more kids. Um, and so for me, it was important that okay, it's fine if you have a child of your own, but I need someone who's going to want to build a life with me and have more kids with me because I don't have a child of my own and I am going to want my own babies. You know, you, you love your stepkids um, like they're your own and you'll protect them and love them forever but at the same time they're not your blood so there's only so much you can do as a parent for me i feel like i i will love that little girl i will love his little girl always um as my own but she is not my blood she's not related to me per se like she has her own mommy and so for me it's important to have a kid who calls me mommy that I can be like yeah that's my daughter that's my son I feel like it's only fair for me to feel a little bit selfish in that department but that doesn't mean that I am not going to love her his daughter any less so I did tender and uh, arrogant in palette four. Now I'm going to pull out my, okay, so from my James Charles palette, I'm gonna use No Beans, which is this color right here, that color right there, okay. And I'm gonna just do a little bit, so I'm gonna get my blending brush out for this. So I'm going to do just a little bit here in the corner, just for an added smoky effect. Okay. And I'm doing it inwards and upwards. So once my five years was up with my marina, um, I spoke to my man and I told, I, you know, I made the proper phone call to my doctor's office and I asked what is it going to take for me to get this thing removed um, because it, you know, the time is up, it's been five years, it has expired. Um, it's time to take it out. So they told me that I needed to make um, an appointment and come see my doctor. And so I did. I spoke to my man and he was like, all right, get it removed. That's simple enough. Let's, let's do this. And I did. I made the appointment and... I got the Mirena removed. And it was not a pleasant experience because it hurt just as much coming out as it did going in. Will I ever do an IUD again? Yes once I have my babies so once I have babies I will definitely definitely do that again I don't believe in like operating but I'm not a person to judge like for me for my body I would not operate I would just do an IUD again because it was very very helpful so, let me tell you what I went through when I was going to do the marina. When I started to tell people, and by people I mean other women, 
that I was going to get the marina. Boy, did everyone have an opinion. Everyone had an opinion about me getting that it put in and how it, you know, it affected so and so and it didn't help them and it ruined and they still got pregnant and da da da. So I heard all the horror stories that people can possibly tell you about Morena. Some were very scary. Very scary. But, you know, essentially, it was my body and it was something that I wanted to do. And something that I felt was very right and I was very comfortable with. And so I did the, I put the marina on. But let me tell you that all those horror stories did scare the shit out of me. Excuse my language. However, I had a very positive experience with the, the marina when I had it. Um, it didn't, you know, cause me any ulcers. I didn't get PCOS because that was one of the stories that it can, it can cause. PCOS, that didn't happen to me. That wasn't the case for me. As a matter of fact, I am very healthy. I have a very healthy uterus. I am very fertile. I am grateful for my fertility. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it sucks that those horror stories happen for other people, but that wasn't the case for me. And at the end of the day, it was my body and I did whatever I needed to do for me. And so the Mirena is what worked for me and it worked beautifully. And I did not um, bleed longer than probably three months the most. And it wasn't even like a period kind of bleeding. I did get my period once immediately after it was in. But I feel like that one was already on its way down. So I feel like that was the last drain. I got my period once. It didn't last very long. And then after that, it was spotting. So once I spotted, you know, everything else was perfectly fine. Um, I didn't have any more bleeding, you know, for the rest of the five years I did bleed once where it was like a lot of blood and it did scare me um and I went to the emergency room but I immediately had I could have waited to go to my doctor because I did have an appointment with her the next day but I was so scared that I went straight to the doctor and I got checked everything turned out fine nothing to be afraid of now I'm gonna go in with from the James Charles palette, I'm going to go in with Face, which is like the biggest color. It's a beautiful shimmer. Whoops. So Face is this color right here. Okay. Yes, I kept the paper of my James Charles palette because I like knowing what I'm wearing, especially if I'm doing tutorials. Like I love, I love watching videos that have the name of the of the eyeshadow I don't I don't know who else is out out there is like me but if you are comment below all right so I'm gonna use the same blending brush and I'm just gonna tap that in to my lid and kind of like circle and blend it out like in a circular motion How pretty is that? So we're gonna get some face again and do the other side. Okay. Alrighty then. Okay. 
now what I'm going to do is get some ring light into the inner corners of my eyes. What you can do is you can, um, what I tend to do is I tend to get like a clean Q-tip and clean out any edges. I feel like with a Q-tip it is very precise. Alright, so my, um, my camera died so I am recording from my phone. Um, hopefully you guys can see better. So I went ahead and did my eyeliner because that was the next step that I was going to do. And the eyeliner that I used was also from Unique. It is a Moodstruck Precision Pencil. Now what I like about these pencils are that they really, really stay on your face. Like they're smudge free, they're sweat proof, they're water resistant. So if you're the type of person that really, really sweats, then that is the brush, I mean the eyeliner that you need to get. Um, I don't really do a lot of contouring, but I do have the Scott Barnes um, contouring palette. So I, I am just learning how to contour, and because I have makeup already on, I'm not going to do a lot of it. So I'm just going to do some, just a little bit like on the tip of your nose, of my nose. Now, mind you, this is supposed to be, like, before, right, before you do all the eye stuff, but, so I'm just going to go ahead and blend with my brush here. Notice I'm just blending, like, in circles. Look at that. And it's already like marked my my nose in a really pretty way. And the color that I'm using is frame because I'm not that dark, so frame, especially because I'm doing it over the foundation. Typically you do this before the foundation is even in place. And I'm using a like a foundation brush to apply it. And I'm not bringing it all the way up either. And again, I'm still learning. I'm not doing this as pronounced as Scott Barnes does because like I said, I'm still learning, I'm still practicing. But already, it's giving really nice shape to my nose. And it's bringing my nose like even a little bit thinner, which is what I like about it. So I'm gonna use the same color frame. Okay, and I'm just gonna like tap around my forehead here. Okay, not too much. And before I go into the um, cheek area, I'm just gonna blend all of this like out. And I wanna make sure too that it's like within the, the hairline, just so that it looks symmetrical. 
I'm gonna blend it out like in circles really, really well. The key to contouring from what I've seen so far is just blending. Blending, blending, blending. Okay. So already that looks really good. And like I said, I'm blending in circles, circle, 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 circle. Okay. Now I do it like that and I just leave this center here normal. So a little bit of that frame as well. Okay, my hair needs to just go back a little bit more there. I'm gonna suck my cheeks in so I can get that pronounced cheekbone. And I'm doing a thin line because I don't want it to be so thick. Okay, so that's not as thick, which is fine. Again, blend that up and I'm blending upwards. This is what I do when I'm in a rush, by the way. When I have time, I do contour the right way, okay? Don't, don't come for me. Here we go. Perfect. Okay. Now I am gonna use a little bit more of that frame for underneath here. Just like literally right underneath my jawline, okay. And notice I'm not doing, I'm doing it very light as well. And now I'm just gonna blend. Lightly over my lip line. And you can even, like I, sometimes I'll use this same palette for like lip line or even my eyebrows. Like if I'm really lazy and I've already started with the contouring, then I will use some of it. So with my, um, with my blush brush, I'm gonna use the color shade, just a dab, just, on the apple of my cheeks. 
just to give some color and work upward. I'm stapling and now I'm like in circular motions going upwards. So I'm gonna do mascara next, which is my Moodstruck Epic Mascara. So I'm only gonna do one coat of this. So that's one coat. So I was saying about the Morena. I, I don't know where I left off on that story when my camera died, but basically my boyfriend and I decided that we want to start trying and re get that IUD removed. It was painful when it came out, but... I'm glad that I did it. I'm glad that I did it because I'm ready to be a mom and have a baby. Now highlighter I use from my James Charles palette. The, ring, the color ring light works as a highlighter, which is what I like about it. So, I'm gonna use some of it on my brow bone. Okay, all the way in and out. Okay. The tip of my nose the bridge mind you I am going to blend it out okay I know it looks weird now with the same brush that I blended everything else I'm gonna blend the highlight And I did mainly like on top of my cheekbone, like where I, so I'm gonna use, this is Boo. Morphe Lipstick in Boo. Um, I am gonna use the lip liner.
And then I'm going to go over with Boo. So that's this color. So I'm gonna use this like pinky Morphe, it's called Pop, just to give it a nice color. So this is the look for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed my story time while I got all glammed up. I know this is something that um, is new, something I know I've been MIA for a while. Um, part of the reason why I have been MIA is because I landed in the hospital. I was very, very anemic. Um, they found out that I had very low hemoglobins and I needed a, a blood transfusion and it turned out being two blood transfusions. Um, that is a, a whole nother story separate from the, uh, the whole IUD thing. Um, but yeah, um, I am IUD free. Mar the Morena did not do anything, you know, like harmful to me. It did not cause me any health issues. I'm totally healthy. Um, I'm very fertile no issues with that if you choose to get an iud definitely consult your doctor first this is just my experience with the morena with the iud if you've had bad experiences with iud's or any kind of birth control please please talk to a doctor first i am not a doctor i am not telling you to get the morena i am not telling you to get an iud i am telling you however my experience because i feel like People don't talk about this a lot and it's not out there as it should be and us women need to stick together and we definitely need to share more of our stories with each other um, there's a lot of things that I didn't know could happen until I started going through them so if you want to hear more of my birth control story or my journey to being a mom, um, please comment below. Hit the like button on this um, video. Share it with your friends. And if you want to and you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos, please hit the subscribe button and that post notification bell button so that you will never miss my next Thank you guys for tuning in. I love you guys. Tune in next time when I transform myself into Farrah Fawcett. I love you guys. Have a good night.